Hey guys, TJ Schwartz here. Welcome back to the shop. Today we're talking about knife sheaths. So I have a previous video where I developed some ideas on how to mount a clip to the sheath. So I ended up 3D printing standoffs. I don't know if you can see that. These are mock-ups of the knives. And the net effect after you mold Kydex onto the sheath is this raised boss right here. Now, how that works is there's this small, they call it a double binder post, so it's two threaded posts on a little pill-shaped piece of steel. So you put that inside the sheath, and then, as you can see, the two threaded posts stick out, and I hold it with my finger. Um, I then put the clip on and thread some screws in, and then you have a clip here, I'll put another screw in. You have a clip that is on the center line of the sheath. So the benefit of that is you don't have a weird secondary external feature to try to center this clip or loop or whatever it is you're doing on the sheath. So it's the cleanest solution that I've found and I really love it and I've been running with it. I made a lot of sheaths this way. Today, I wanna to show you some updates I've done to the whole process and how I'm actually turning it into a real workflow. It involves the CNC, so I am CNC machining the Kydex itself, and I wanna give you an inside look at how I do that. Now, my requirements were a little bit different than some in that I offer, as you can see, an ambidextrous, so this would put that boss for the clip on both sides. The right-handed version which is only on the left side of the actual knife and the left-handed version and also a version that doesn't have that feature in case you did prefer a tech lock or if this was only going to go in a backpack it's a hunting knife or a kitchen knife or whatever um, and so the reason that gives me a little bit more um, confinement on how I can do this when I machine it is I when I form a sheath uh, piece of kydex to one of these uh, knives these mock-ups, um, I have different shapes going on. And so I wanted to be able to do different mock-ups and be able to change things. And a lot of people will machine like a piece of Delrin or even aluminum into the shape of the knife the way they want it. And then they'll mold like a whole entire piece of Kydex, oftentimes with a vacuum press, put it on the machine, and then have two halves. Uh, but because I have so many variations, I would need different fully machined interfaces to do the different uh, left, right, and whatnot. And so it'd be quite a number of machining fixtures just to be able to do that. And so the easiest thing for me was to take otherwise, like they reject knives that had other issues and reallocate them to this, which is the 3D printed parts that are glued on. I also have this portion here uh, that's 3D printed and glued on that allows for a better draw pathway. When you draw the knife out, you can see just the tail end of it right here where it doesn't catch the edge coming out. Um, but the way this works on my machine, the way I have it set up is so versatile that anytime I, I just grab another reject knife or a scrap knife and configure it in another way, wh whether I decide to do different degree angles or whatever kind of thing, this fixture on the machine and the way that it runs is not gonna change at all. So versatility was kind of king for this. And I've got a system I think that works really well. It also would allow me this uh, system to, if I was doing thicker or thinner versions of the knife or different handle styles, let's say I did a different handle thickness, which would change this. Once again, if I had like a Delrin machined uh, fixture that was dedicated to that knife shape, then every time if I made the handle thicker, let's say, I would have to have all the fixtures to include left, right, ambidextrous, et cetera. So any changes, like I said, would be, would be exponential. So this solves all of that and i wanted to show you guys today so check it out so i've got a griddle i think it's from amazon presto brand is like 35 bucks 40 bucks i've got it set to around 300 degrees i have found different colors take a little bit different temperatures at times which is interesting but that temperature range is about right for this griddle i have found that i turn it on and let it sit for like 30 minutes because when i when i first turn the griddle on it spikes to a really high temperature in certain spots 
and then it starts to equalize and then the hot spots kind of equalize with the rest. And so if I just turn it to 300 and put the Kydex on immediately, it'll burn the Kydex because they're sitting on various hot spots. But I put it on here, um, I leave it on for, it's gotta be like, I don't know, five to 10 minutes. And so in the workflow, I just make sure I always have some on there getting hot. Um, so I'll let that get to temperature and then I'll show you the press that I use to form it. So again, here's the mock-up. I put a piece of plastic here that's been slit so that it slides onto the tip of the knife. That will later create the drain hole. It allows me, after the sheath is complete, to blow it out with air or run water through it. It's just very appropriate for an outdoors knife to have a hole through the tip that you can later clean. Uh, and then, as far as the masking tape goes, I've got two layers, but I terminate it right before this little clearance hole. So if you can imagine the kydex compressing, it's going to compress and actually touch the bevel of the knife in two little spots right here. Uh, obviously this drain hole apparatus is going to kind of clearance it some, but with just a little bit of actual contact to the full final thickness of the blade, it prevents the rattle. So if you were to put tape across the whole thing, it's my experience that the tip is going to have just enough play to wiggle. And so most of the time when you have a wiggle in a sheath or a rattle, it's because of the tip, because the handle is usually gonna have good engagement, but if the tip's moving, you have that movement. So the tiniest little bit of pinch on the tip holds it, and then when you draw, because the, the blade's tapered that direction, I haven't experienced scratching or anything out there at the tip, but it is important to have two layers where the tape's spacing out on the bevel, so that as you draw, you're not gonna scratch all the way across the bevel as it pulls out. So I've got clamps here that I'm gonna clamp this down. Once again, I have another video where I went into some other details on sheath making. Uh, definitely reference that as well, but this is kind of the latest, greatest iteration. So I'm gonna throw uh, that Kydex on here and press it up. So it's been 15 minutes. I'm going to release this thing. There we have it. Looks like it took a nice form. You can just pull this out, set it aside. But as you can see, it's welded together. It's all one piece essentially right now. You can see the definition of the boss that I've got on there and whatnot. So now comes the interesting part and why I wanted to make this video, and that is how this thing can go in a CNC machine. So the Tormox, what I'm using for Kydex, I have a Saunders Machine Works fixture plate. Not necessary for this, but it's very helpful. Got a Saunders pallet. I have some dowel pins that are threaded that are inserted into this fixture. And the interesting thing, this is where the versatility comes in, is that I've got the holes revealed on this knife. I drop it on right here. I will put one screw in here just to make sure the part doesn't totally lift off. But I've got four bolts turned up that support this thing. And the drill is gonna come in and drill the holes out here in space which is going to guarantee 100% of the time that the holes line up in such a way that the handle positioning in this sheath is perfect. Because if, if you were to drill, take this apart, somehow put it on a fixture and try to locate it and drill holes on the two pieces independently, then if you put it together and you had any slippage or movement at all, and these eyelets were offset, and so one half of the handle or one half of the sheath was even just tiny a tiny bit out to one side when it was put back together, then when the knife goes in, it's gonna bind, it's gonna rub, there's gonna be issues. So because the holes are drilled while it's welded together like this, then the tolerances throughout the rest of the process are 100% irrelevant because as long as 
The holes are drilled like this. Every sheath works every time and I can do it with my eyes closed and it's guaranteed functional process. So this is just a standard quarter inch two flute drill, like a hardware store style drill. I'm turning it at, looks like 2,500 RPM. You don't wanna to go too fast cause you'll actually melt plastic. Uh, you have to go slow enough to do actual cutting and not just melting. So as you can see, I get a total chip buildup, which is fine, I just remove it. So once again, my holes are drilled. Everything's perfect. Once this goes back together, the eyelets are gonna align everything dead on. So I've got this drain hole. I've got this putty knife, just like a sheet rocker's knife. I just put it in the drain hole and I just split it. And when I do that, it breaks that sort of weld job that I mentioned earlier. Take that guy out. Now I've got two halves. Once again, the other processes I considered, you would have these separate and then drill holes and you would be forced to find a way to locate these on some sort of knife shaped fixture that would locate these and then holding them down would be another thing where you could use double-sided tape, super glue, or something. But with this method, there's no glue, no tape, guaranteed consistency. These are always gonna go together the right way. So now it's attached. I set the fixture up to have these threaded pins in every hole and screw it all the way down. But in the interest of time, I found that two is all that it takes because those pins actually reveal into those quarter inch holes. And so it can't move side to side. I get a lot of chatter for obvious reasons but with kydex i found it doesn't matter and the speed of just doing two screws is is better um, so back here i've got the quarter inch end mill that's going to do this it's kind of important to have a down cut end mill now a normal end mill when it spins it's going to lift on a piece of material because it's like a screw spinning against it lifting it up a down cut has a reversed helix so as it spins in this material it's pushing it down so that prevents the majority of the chatter because it's always driving downward. I do a roughing pass and a finishing pass. The finishing pass chatters a little bit more yet, but I, I always pull those uh, pieces of scrap out because those pieces of scrap will actually get uh, wrapped up around the spindle and start spinning around and I just get them out of the way. So there are the two halves. You can see down towards the tip where that step down occurs, where you get a little bit more grip near the tip. Now for the final finishing, I don't do the drilling of the holes you can see in there for the screws on the mill because I do batches of these where they're all custom ordered. So it'll be like left hand, right hand, ambidextrous, left, left, right, right. And I would have to call up a new program for every single one. So I just left a little nipple on the 3D print so that when I take it over to the drill press and knock those out, it self centers. So I've got it here, I've got those two holes drilled. I do, uh, I have started chamfering those just to make it look cleaner. 
So it's just a 45 degree chamfer style bit, just generic hardware store stuff. Really slowly spinning it. I'll throw a little chamfer. Try to make them even. One thing I have done to improve these sheaths further is I have a 90 degree edge right here that is pretty hard to actually round over and make for a nice nice in and out for the knife. Uh, it's hard to do that when they're actually assembled. So before I put an eyelid in, I will chamfer the inside of the throat of the sheath. So I've got that chamfer on there. It throws a big burr and it's kind of gummy and stuff. So before I put an eyelid in, I take 320 grit sandpaper and I just clean up that chamfer and make sure that the inside of that throw is nice and round and clean. Now a flap disc made of Scotch-Brite on a bench grinder would be really fast and easy and it's the way most people do this to burnish that. I'm gonna start doing that. I just don't have a bench grinder set up in the shop. That'll make this all more efficient as well. But I'll just quickly sand that out. Because once again, once you put eyelets in, it's hard to tune the throat of the sheath to be nice and smooth. So I've got the throat of these two nice and smooth and clean. Now it's time to put eyelets in it. So it's now a functional sheath, but the edge is never going to be perfect when you put two pieces of material together like that and have it machined. So once again, I'm using the grinder to take that finish down. Again, a flap disc on a, with a Scotch-Brite flap disc on a bench grinder would be a better solution, but I'll get there eventually. So I'm going to sand this perimeter down perfectly even and true. As a final step, in lieu of the Scotch-Brite, another 320 grit pass, just real quick around the edges. So I gave it a quick rub down with WD-40, it always gives it a nice sheen. There is the finished sheath. Very quick, very efficient, essentially guaranteed accuracy every time. So, quick test fit. No rattle. Once again, no rattle, good retention. That's a lot of that's the design of the sheath, which I refined. But that is how I make Kydex sheaths as close to perfect as I can every time and repeatably with the CNC. There's a few huge advantages that go into the design when I decided to do that. One of them is that the margin from the edge of the sheath to the knife that retains the eyelets and overall contributes to the size of the sheath. That, you can only get so tight if you're drilling these holes by hand because a slight variation in one eyelet will pinch the kydex together and it'll make a, a pinch point for the knife going in. So on a lot of handmade sheaths, it has to be a wider gap to allow for any tiny variability. But with the CNC apparatus and because it's grill, drilling in the same spot every time, I was able to lock those in Till the margin was at the absolute minimum all the way around. So my sheaths shrunk in size dramatically, which was part of the goal here. Um, so again, the advantage of this is versatility, precision every time, guaranteed the same fit every time. And also I'm machining my bevels so they're always the same. Another advantage of this would be if your bevels were hand ground, you could take each knife that is hand ground you know, given that it was either water jet and nicely finished and ground or machined on the perimeter, you could take a hand ground knife and match it to every sheath every time using the same method because you just use that knife for that mold, put it in the machine, drill it, etc. So variability in the knife itself is, uh, is still functional with this method, which is uncommon when you approach CNC sheath making. So that's why I decided to do it that way, and I am extremely happy. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you check out my other Kydex video where I developed this boss offset idea. And I hope you subscribe to the channel, like, follow, do all the good stuff. 
and I hope you stick around. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.